Thank you, Kaylee. If you'll turn to Luke chapter 5, verse 11. Luke says, and when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. When you look at that in the Greek, it says, and bringing to land the boats upon the land, letting go of everything, they followed him. Uh, it's a little strange the way it's worded but there is an important word in there that we'll come back to in just a minute and that's this word about left or letting go and i would argue that letting go is the better translation than left but we'll see about that in just a minute but the point is that the disciples left everything possession wise they left their boats they left their nets they left uh, their financial stability, uh, they left their families, they left everything to follow Jesus. And when you think in terms of this command in the, in the scriptures and specifically in the gospels, when we talk about leaving everything, usually we, we associate that with possessions or finances or something. Um, and that's emphasized, as it were, in a number of different ones, like we heard in today's gospel. But also, if you were reading the daily office today, you would have heard another one, which is the rich young ruler. And that was in Mark's gospel in chapter 10. But it's also found in Matthew's gospel in chapter 19 and Luke's gospel in chapter 18. And it says, if Jesus says to this rich young, young ruler, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But there are other scriptures that point beyond finances and possessions. For example, in Luke chapter 14, verse 33, Jesus says, so therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple." He isn't pointing specifically at possessions, renounce everything. And that's emphasized again in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, we can leave our possessions behind to follow Jesus, but if we have not left behind all of those things that tie us to the world emotionally, spiritually, mentally, we're really not going to be of a lot of use to the Lord. Let me give you an example. Many, many years ago, I was headed up to the church when we were still in the Episcopal Church, and there was a man that I had seen walking Old Lester Highway. I'd seen him over and over again, and I just felt compelled to stop that Sunday morning and I offered him a ride. And he looked at me and he says, why would you do that? And I said, well, I see you walking this road a lot. I drive this road a lot. I just thought I would offer you the opportunity to take a ride and I'll take you wherever it is you want to go. And he said a few more words, but anyway, he did get into the car. And then he looked at me and said, so you think you're a Christian, huh? And I said, I do believe I follow Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Absolutely. He said, well, why the hell do you wear that collar? And I said, I am a priest. It is part of my uniform. And he said, well, if you were a real Christian like me, <laughs> you would recognize that people will label you as a pedophile for wearing that. <laughs> He may have left all of his possessions, but he was still hanging on to some prejudices. And that's something that I believe the Lord wants us to <laughs> let go. So what about these intangibles, as it were, the, not the, the possessions and finances, but what about these things, these other things that God wants us to let go? 
you know, what are we hanging on to? What is it in your life that you are still holding on to that really are inhibiting you from moving forward in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit? Pride, anger, envy. Are any of those hurting you at this time? Maybe the prejudices, political prejudices. Um, we've all been hurt. Every one of us has been hurt. Are you hanging on to those hurts or are you letting them go? You have vindictive thoughts about somebody who may have done you wrong in the past. Any kind of imaginings, be they sexual imaginings or imaginings of things that you know you'll never be able to do, but you're holding on to them anyway. We all have certain doubts and fears addictions what is it that god wants you to let go and that brings us back to that word i was mentioning to you at the beginning of the sermon and the word letting go aphentis in greek and the niv the rsv the esv they all they all translate that as they left everything past tense but that word aphentis is actually an active participle. It's something that's ongoing. We don't just leave these things. It's an ongoing process of letting go of things. As we go on in life, we begin to recognize there are certain things that we may still be holding on to that we need the grace of God to let go. And so it is a process. And you can see that in the disciples. For example, Judas. Judas apparently never really let go of the idea that he thought Jesus should manifest himself to the world. How did that work out for him? All of the disciples had fear that they clung to, so that after the crucifixion, where did they all go? Did they all go and proclaim, hey, this is Jesus, you just crucified? No, they hid in an upper room and with a locked door. They held on to their fear, but it wasn't until Jesus came and presented himself inside that locked room that they began to let go of that fear. But it really wasn't until Pentecost and the Holy Spirit coming with the power and the cleansing of the Holy Spirit that they were truly able to, as Father Chris's favorite scripture in Acts chapter 4, become bold. And that fear was finally conquered. But it's a process, friends. It's a process. We all have to go through it. And we are called to let go of the things that tie us to this world. The things that keep us bound to the ways of this world. We have three very, very important events coming up, which I believe are going to help us in this process of letting go. First of all, 10 days from now, the bishop will be here and he is going to do a service of confirmation. And then again, on Friday night, that's Wednesday night. And then again, on Friday night, the bishop will be here to speak. And I believe that the Lord has a word for every single one of us. And we may even have the opportunity to let the bishop lay hands on us and pray over us. Now, for the confirmation on Wednesday night, we, are, we have 10 confirmands. And so in order to not keep us here all night long, I'm going to ask that anybody who wants to be reaffirmed, hold off on that on Wednesday night. We'll let the bishop minister to those who are being confirmed and received on Wednesday night, because he's going to prophesy over each one of us. Do you realize the last time the bishop was here was August of 2019? there's a lot of, of business that needs to be taken care of as it were you know so but let's let him minister to the confirmants we'll all be together and we all should be here to support them we should all be worshiping together and supporting the bishop and listening to what he has to say and his word for us that night but then on friday night i talked to the bishop earlier this week and i said can we have some personal ministry time I believe our congregation really needs to have some personal ministry. And he said, absolutely. He would be glad to lay hands on any of us, pray over us. And so this is the first of those three events coming up, the bishop's visit. 
Then we have a quiet day scheduled for March 5th, Saturday, March 5th, 10 a.m. And it would be so important for us to come together to listen. We haven't been able to actually come together in person for a quiet day in a long time. We've done it on Zoom, but that's not quite the same. But coming together that we may hear the voice of the Lord, not only in that quiet, still, small voice, but also through each other as we share what the Lord has spoken to us during our quiet time. And then thirdly, we've got the whole season of Lent coming up. There's not a better time to let go. You know, the old thing in, in the Anglican Roman Catholic tradition was, what are you giving up for Lent? Well, what are you letting go for Lent? And what are you asking God to give you the grace to let that go? Whatever it may be. If you need some help with that, any of the clergy would be glad to talk to you about that and help you work through that. If you need to make a confession, we're all available to listen and to give that sacramental grace of forgiveness. And we can't do it without the grace of God. None of us is capable of doing any of this without the grace of God. But here's the good news. If you are listening to those scriptures today, these scriptures all emphasize that God is there for us. And God will give us the ability and the power to overcome any obstacle in our way. For example, in the story from Gideon. Gideon, how was that that was word you? The first I read it said, <laughs> Father Chris says that in the version he read, <laughs> Gideon says, Pardon me? <laughs> yeah. No, Gideon comes, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And what does the Lord say to him? He says, I will be with you. I will be with you. <clears throat> and in Psalm 85, verse 12, the psalmist says, yes, the Lord will give you what is good. I will be with you, and I'm going to give you whatever it is that is good that you need. Let me close with this. Miranda had a dream many, many, many years ago. I asked her this morning, if I, or yesterday, if I could share this story, and she said yes. Um, she had a dream many years ago uh, where she was hauling a footlocker, okay? And she was crossing through a stream of water carrying this footlocker. And it was really weighting her down. It was really making it hard to make any progress. And God kept telling her, let it go. Let it go. And she was still just struggling against this footlocker, trying to get it across. Finally, the Lord says, take a look. And so she lifts her arm, pull the footlocker out from under the water, and all she's holding is a handle. Mm -hmm. There's no footlocker there. The Lord has taken that stuff away. We're still clinging on to it. If you just let it go. God has already made the provision to wipe it all away. God will be with you. And he will give you every good gift that you need. He's made the provision. Yes, the Lord will give you what is good. Amen. Amen.